So let me first say um, we really get honored in such a nice fashion. That's one of the things that I've always thought about in my career is that everybody thinks I'm just a bioethicist. <laughs> uh, which would be enough, right? It would, it would be enough. Um, but uh, obviously I have a broader reputation. <laughs> I'm getting honored for a, for a broader career. Now, I've been around for a long time, and, I, and I'm sure um, that, that, that's one reason I'm being honored is because you know, accumulating over the years, a lot of things were happening. Um, I've been asked to talk about the origins and the future of bioethics principally, but I've also taken some liberty because I know a little bit about your interests here of expanding it to the area of practical ethics, practical moral philosophy, if you prefer. So I'm going to say something about the origins of bioethics broadly construed, that is to say broadly construed meaning well beyond philosophy. And then I want to say something about the origins in philosophy um, of the notion of practical ethics. So um, I'm going to take an historical position that some of you may think is implausible. Even my colleagues here in the front row may think is impossible, uh, impossible to show because it's a very strong thesis that's focused on a particular period. My view is you can date, roughly speaking, but I want to take seriously the particular date, you can date bioethics as we know it today to approximately 1972. And I want to tell you why. There were a number of things happening in 1972. There were some dramatic accusations of misconduct. I mean, thinking, of course, principally about the United States where all this tends to get underway at this point. Some dr dramatic cases of misconduct. Some in research, some in clinical practice, and so on. There were also three seminal court cases that came down in three states in the United States, all in 1972 and all on informed consent. They had a dramatic impact, an historical impact. Also, there was a book published by a well-known bioethics author named Jay Katz, a book entitled Experimentation with Human Beings. That book was published in 1972. The book was by a physician teaching in a law school. That's important. Let me say from the start, bioethics isn't just philosophy. It may have been dominated by philosophy in the first decade or two. Uh, okay. But from the start, there were people in multiple disciplines. Also, in 1972, Samuel Gorovitz began planning, he planned in 1972 and 1973, the first ever training camp for professional philosophers in bioethics. Right? So, get the picture, a lot was happening. Also, there was a lot happening with the National Institutes of Health, right? which basically came out of medicine and law at that particular institution. But I won't uh, try to get into that complicated matter. Uh, so that's what I would say about the origins of bioethics. Now, since I know many of you are interested in philosophy, I want to say something also about the origins of practical ethics and philosophy. You will see an emerging theme that uh, brings the two together. I graduated with my PhD in 1970. The first class that I chose to teach was a course entitled Freedom and Dissent. It was my attempt to do what was almost impossible to do at the time, and I want to make a strong point of this, which is practical ethics and philosophy. It did not exist in 1970. There were no professors of practical ethics. Few philosophy departments would even consider teaching a course in that area. The literature in what might be called practical ethics was puny indeed at the time. But in 1971 or 1972, depending on how you did it, a man named James Rachels at NYU published a book, the simple title, Moral Problems. This was the first book. 
ever to show that professional philosophers could produce very good work and practical ethics. He had um, arranged authors to write this book. Uh, I believe myself that James Rachels was an outstanding philosopher of our period. He, he died fairly recently. This book was dynamite because it got a lot of attention in philosophy. It was clearly practical ethics. In my view, as I say, the first in philosophy. Rachel's and I clearly saw eye to eye. I recognized right from the start when I saw this book, this guy really gets it, right? He gets what other philosophers don't get, namely that there's this real thing. So the 1970s, I believe, is the time when philosophy woke up. Woke up from a period in which it had completely ignored such matters. Now I want to skip one year to 1973. Um, and talk about a physician. There was a man named Andre Hellegers. He was the man that recruited me into bioethics. He was a professor of OBGYN at the Georgetown Medical School. Andre and I had started having lunch on Saturdays, and I realized after a while that he was recruiting me into a new institute that he was founding, right? It was just coming away in 1972. I'm coming back to this day because of what I see is its critical importance. Andre said to me one day, and I'm pretty sure I've got an almost direct quote of it because it really stuck with me. He said, I tell you, Tom, physicians have no idea what is on the horizon of ethical issues in medicine. I believe he was right. Andre was a man of vision. And I think the 1970s turned out to be a wake-up period in medicine, not just in philosophy. Jim Childress and I formed the ideas underlying our book and principles of biomedical ethics in 1975. The book was then published in 1979. I would want to argue that when we started writing this book in 75, the idea of ethical theory and bioethics really did not exist. Now, some people would contest that, particularly people who had gone to the Gorovitz camp, which we call, call summer camp, which occurred in 1974. But I wouldn't want to stick with that. Basically, there was no significant literature um, at the time. So what Jim and I had to do was sort of make it up. Um, now, I want to turn away from what I see as the critical early origins of bioethics and say something about the subsequent history until today, as I see it, deeply condensed. Bioethics gradually became, over the next decades, a very multicultural field, and one that was focused on biomedical sciences and research, and, and research clinical ethics, public health, and public policy. That became bioethics. And it drew people from all of these fields. It continues to draw people from all of these fields. If you look at the early publications in bioethics, they are heavily philosophical. If you look at what the literature is today, that is simply not true, right? It's a very, very different field. Um, now, as to the future of bioethics, I think this history that I just sketched in roughly a paragraph is its future. That is, bioethics will continue to be multicultural, and it will broaden its interest and move into other fields as yet untouched. Untouched is a little too strong, so let me take that back. Seriously underdeveloped. Some examples might be the following. Animal research ethics. Right? It's just getting underway in bioethics. It's been around for a while, but not in bioethics. Um, Jeff Kahn, sitting in the front row here, has been a very significant figure in stimulating animal research ethics in the last decade. Um, I think most fields of medicine will take up bioethics, and probably most departments in medical schools will take up bioethics, including those that have not done so at the present time. Also, there will the idea of social justice in bioethics will be expanded and will take on many new issues. I think 
Um, I hope I'm not too biased because Ruth Fenton, my wife, is um, a scholar in social justice and we talk about it all the time. But I want to say I think if there's any area of bioethics that will be of critical importance socially in upcoming years, it will be the area focused on social justice. Now, back to Andre Heliger, to our conclusion of what I have to say. Um, about 10 years ago or so, maybe a little longer, Ruth and I were giving a presentation before a group called Primer in the United States, Professional Responsibility in Medicine and Research. And um, a question came from the audience. The question was, who has been the most influential figure on you in your career? And somewhat to our surprise, certainly to my surprise, we both said Andre Hillegers. Neither of us is in medicine. Both of us recognized what he had contributed to bioethics. He died very young, by the way. He died just a few years after um, we'd gotten to, to know him well. Um, why? Why was he so impressive? Because he had leadership skills. He had vision. He had a deep intelligence. He had an extensive excitement about the field. So, when Evangelos asked me to say something about the future of bioethics, the future of bioethics is to find people like Andre Helligers, people who can be leaders in fields like medicine, which will probably become even more important than, than it has been. Um, now I want to say something uh, in applying the idea that I just put forward about Ruth and Jeff and Jeremy. All of them came, all three of them came to the Kennedy Institute, um, not because of me, but because it was the Kennedy Institute, and to some extent because of Andre Heller's, deeply so in Ruth's case. Um, I want to say, because I, I, I want to reach out to you at this point, all of these folks are brilliant, and now uh, I can look back on, on people who were, in one respect or the other, my students, though I don't claim them all, <laughs> told me to claim them a little bit too much, but I have an opportunity to teach each of them to a limited extent uh, in the early years. They're all brilliant at what they do. And if you want to know what the future of bioethics is, it's not just in people like Andre Helligers in medicine. It's in people like these folks, right? You can look back and see these careers unfold. All are very multidisciplinary, right? None of the three people you see before you, and you will say something, uh, I believe, um, <coughs> none of them is stuck in a discipline, which happens to so many people. I believe everybody in bioethics should be grounded in a discipline but should be multidisciplinary if they're going to do well in the field. I don't have any other predictions about the future except if you want to develop a great bioethics presence in Greece, and I know you do, pick people like them and hopefully they will have careers in this model. Um, now that's really all I have to say. Um, uh, I am so happy to be here, so so happy to meet you, and, and uh, we, as you may know, we've just spent several days here with um, some, of, some of your colleagues, and we had a great time uh, getting to know everyone, and to um, bring that together with the interest that we've had in the um, Stavros Niarchos Cultural Center as it has grown up over the years and our friends in that foundation. We feel um, so um, close to the people of, of Greece through that foundation and we want to express, express our appreciation to them and to you for this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>